God? Yeah. Here we go. No, no, you're fine. So, uh, I, I have to admit, um, extracting data from the yearbook is not as easy as it looks. And uh, we've got this clunky old DOS system that we use for keeping data. Any of you that are computer people know that it's hard to get the... I, I forgot, I did basic programming when I was in college on a teletype, okay? So I'm, I'm not that big a brain on this stuff, but um, so some of this data might be a little bit off. This is the number of congregations in the region according to the yearbook over the last 10 years and uh, what that looks like in terms of numbers. Congregations that have withdrawn, but I, you need to know that when we look at this list, there's about 93 congregations listed. That's congregations in formation as well as congregations that exist. You have to know that there are 10 churches of those that have not reported uh, at least twice during that 10 year period of time. And that says to me that they are very marginally committed to this region as congregations, so we need to think about that. Three congregations have not reported more than 10 years. Uh, that's, a, that's a big number in terms of doing that. But basically, you've been all over the map. Now, one of the things I would say that's good when I compare this with other regions, you've been all over the map. <laughs> uh, regions that don't have jagged lines, that are just flat line, um, I would say would be more difficult to work in than a region that's all over the map. Uh, the second thing I want to say is it's important to recognize the size distribution of congregations in this region. Uh, normally speaking, you have 37% uh, of your congregations are less than 60 in worship on Sunday morning. 37%. Uh, that's a big number, but the U.S. average of all disciple congregations is 50%. So you're not as bad a shape as other regions in terms of congregational size. Now, uh, I put these sizes, I, I uh, extracted data on sizes based on style of church. So this is about a family size congregation. The next size up is pastoral size church. And then the, the sizes above that are uh, corporate size and program size and corporate size and all that kind of stuff too. So when you take and add up, um, the, uh, the pastoral size goes up to 120. You've got another 27% in that category. So when you add those two up, that's 64%. Now one of the things that's interesting about it is we do studies on congregational sustainability. Congregations usually are sustainable at about 120 in worship on Sunday morning. If they're not above 120, they're usually living off of assets of a previous generation. Now, depending on building operation costs, you could be a much larger congregation and still not be sustainable because you're having to live off of the assets of a previous generation. But just in general terms, around 120 is the sustainability level for a disciple congregation today. You know what the sustainability level was in 1930 for <coughs> congregations? How much? You been thinking big number? It was actually 30. 30 people in worship could sustain a building, a full-time pastor, mission programs. In fact, they gave almost 50% to mission congregations did in the 1930s, uh, unlike they do today. And so when we have 64% uh, of our congregations below sustainability rates, that should say something to us. Now, that's really actually better than the national average. The national average for disciples is around 76% are below the sustainability level. So you're in good condition. The other thing I want to do is go over to the top. You have 7% of your congregations average more than 300 in worship on Sunday morning. Uh, compared to other regions, or the national average on that is 1%. So you have a valuable resource of some larger congregations that might be doing some great things that could benefit other congregations. I'm just planting a seed here to say, in our future thinking, let's not just think that the regional staff has to provide everything for everybody. That you might have some wealth of knowledge and energy from other congregations within the, this um, region that could help out. And the neat thing about this is how many of you live so close together? I mean, this doesn't happen in any other region in our country. Here's another interesting thing. Um, and this took an algorithm to do, and I, I wish I could say I was that smart, but I had to work on it quite a while. And, uh, and I had a, a friend that is really good at math. Um, the number of congregations that are declining as opposed to those that are growing. Uh, only 49 congregations gave me enough data points that I, in terms of the yearbook data so that I could really chart this out. So this is a, this is a sample of 49 of the 92 congregations to keep that in mind. So it's only half a sample. Um, let me just also say this about the yearbook. 
Um, you, you know, people think that that's Indianapolis making churches report to them. It is not. It is a document that we provide for the Internal Revenue Service. And it is an important format. That's why you have your nonprofit status as a congregation. It's because we fill out that report on behalf of your congregation. So please fill out your reports so that the church development geeks like me can really figure out what's going on in your region, but also uh, to protect the people that are in your congregation and their charitable giving. Okay, I made that pitch. Um, so, uh, with only that small sample, I could still come up with uh, some numbers. And the first one is that 44% of your congregations are declining at a rate of greater than 25% a decade. 44% are declining at a rate of greater than 25% per decade. That means that if you had 100 people in church in worship on average uh, 10 years ago, you only have 75 in worship today. And so uh, that's a pretty high number. When I first started tracking this back in 2008, it used to be on average 17% of our congregations were in that category. So this is a phenomenal growth in that uh, thing. The other thing that you need to be aware of that the national average on this for other regions is 51%. So even though you've got a high number of congregations declining at a high rate, it's not as high as it is in some other regions. So say good for us. Good for us. Yeah, I'm not feeling a lot there. <laughs> the, other, the other part is, though, 14% of your congregations are growing at a rate greater than 25%. Again, the national average on that is 7%, so you're almost double the national average. You've got some congregations in this region that are, are really doing some good ministry and some spectacular things. Not necessarily that worship growth is the way that we measure that. When we combine all the average worship attendances uh, together of all the congregations and the membership, uh, you can see that membership is on decline, and uh, so is uh, average worship attendance. In fact, your average worship attendance is down 15% over the last decade. Baptisms and transfers are another way to look at things. Uh, baptisms, uh, the trend line is fairly uh, flat on that, but people transferring into congregations, adult uh, decisions, basically, uh, are on a pretty precipitous decline in terms of numbers in congregations. So. Um, Actually, when you look at the data church by church by church, you can see there are some churches that haven't had a baptism in like four or five years, um, and that's, that's not healthy. Um, when we look at total giving to all congregations and compare it to the consumer price index, we can see it's declining. It's not kept pace with the consumer price index. So even though churches are receiving more money per year, uh, their spending power is much less than what it was when they started with it 10 years ago. This is the one that I think should um, be uh, putting some fear in the hearts of a regional minister, and that is the giving to the Disciple Mission Fund uh, as a percentage of uh, per capita giving. It used to be at around 4.5%, and it's dropped down below 3% uh, just in the last few years when you look at the trend line on that. And so over a 10-year period of time, that's a lot of money. That's a, that's a big drop. And there are fewer members. Fewer members. So that's even a bigger drop. Could be in right. total cash, yes. Yeah. In juniors. So the other part that I think is interesting, I used to think that um, what was going on was congregations were giving less to the Disciples Mission Fund and giving more to local mission. But the reality is they're not. They're declining in both areas. Mm -hmm. And so that means congregations are by and large spending more money on themselves. If that's a, that's a Christian way to say it. Mm -hmm. uh, as a church development geek, that's how we say it. And so one of the things that's interesting is it used to be giving to local outreach, the bottom two graphs on this, used to be fairly equal to what congregations gave to the region. You know, they give 5% uh, to the region and 5% 5, 5 to local mission. And what we've seen is that the local mission giving has uh, stayed about the same, but it's the disciple mission fund giving that's dropped. And that gap has gotten much larger towards the end. So you can, I'll leave that up to your imagination to say what that might mean for you. Per capita giving, though, is up 29%. That means the end, each individual in each congregation is giving more of their income uh, or, or giving more to support the budgets of their congregations that they're a part of. One of the disturbing things that I see when I look at congregations in detail uh, on this data is when I've been looking around, I've been seeing um, that 
it's the older members of a congregation that are doing sacrificial giving mm -hmm. and that younger members are not. And so this, I think we're on the edge of a deep cliff that we're going to go over here pretty soon uh, as uh, people reach their life expectancy. Uh, so it used to be back in the uh, 1980s about 20% of the congregation supported 80% of the church's budget. Uh, when I first started in ministry, it would be about 25% uh, supported 75% of the church budgets. Now we're seeing it's about 10% of the congregation supporting 90% of the church budget. So as we move through these kinds of categories, this is trying to, I'm just saying that we're getting into some scary territory that says the economic model of being congregation is going to be falling apart pretty soon if it hasn't fallen apart already. Um, this is another interesting thing, and that is the clergy to congregational ratio. Um, one of the things that a lot of people forget about with regions is you have an obligation to care for your clergy, right? Mm -hmm. And we think very highly, some of my best friends are clergy, <laughs> and uh, we think highly about supporting them and engaging them in ways that are helpful uh, as clergy. That's part of the call that we have as a region. Uh, look at the number that we had. Uh, back 10 years ago, we had uh, three and a half clergy persons per congregation. Now we're, up, we're getting up close to four clergy people per congregation. Now how many churches have four pastors serving them? Mm. None. Well, I mean, very few do. Yeah. But uh, the, the option is that I'm the point that I'm trying to make is we also have care for retired clergy. Uh, we also provide care for people that are in search and call process that just aren't uh, located in a congregation. And as that number goes on, it creates uh, stress for our clergy uh, as time goes on. So, um, I, I didn't get into any of the dynamics on the camp and conference program yet. Uh, I'm going to start doing the research on that on Monday and hope to get some more information for that. But that, I think it's important to note that that's a significant part of what you do as a region. Uh, and that it's a significant part of your budget, it's a significant part of your financial outlay. And we were going to have to address that as a group. So, anybody want to make any comments about any of this data? 